The Honourable Member for Edmonton Riverbend. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Now, since I've been here, since 2015, this government has had a full-fledged attack on my home province of Alberta. It began with flippant statements from the Prime Minister, even before he was elected Prime Minister. He then, I remember Canada Day, where he forgot to mention Alberta. The, the carbon tax, Bill C-48, Bill C-69, all attacks on Alberta. Now what we're seeing is this, this new clean fuel standards that just is once again the, a, a full-fledged um, frontal attack by the Liberals on what the energy sector is and what the energy sector is all about. The, the statistics that I have here are 30,000 job losses, losses nationally and approximately 20 billion of capital will leave Canada with putting in the clean fuel standards. Now yesterday at committee I, asked, I had the opportunity to ask the minister about the, uh, the CFS and he said don't worry, we're diversifying the economy. Uh, Alberta should thank us for this, uh, this new standard being put in place. Nothing could be further from the truth, Madam Speaker. Alberta, about a month ago, released a brand new recycling hub idea to recycle plastics in the province. Not even 24 hours later did we see this government put in place a, a labeling of plastic being a toxic substance. Now what does that do to, to the energy sector and, and Alberta as a whole? It, 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 not only just, it not only just attacks the workers, not only just attacks the jobs that are in that sector, but at the end of the day, the, the vehicles that are made are largely plastic. The, the pipe that goes in the ground is largely plastic. This is, this is a, a, an unfortunate yet another piling on by this, uh, this government. We've, we've seen them add red tape. We've seen them add constant delays in any sort of, of approval processes. It's been, it's been something that in, I, couldn't, I couldn't have imagined when I got here in 2015 the extent to which this uh, particular government and this Prime Minister and these ministers have gone on the attack to our province. Right. Uh, thankfully, we've been able to change the provincial government. We had, uh, unfortunately, a, a Notley NDP government there for, for a, a full four years, which added more and more burden on to the, to the, uh, to the energy sector. Uh, however, we, we still have yet to get rid of, of this government. So my questions to, to this, uh, this parliamentary secretary, to this, uh, this government is, is again and again and again for, it's now been on five years, why does this government insist and continually insist on implementing policies that hurt Albertans? Good question. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Natural Resources. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I want to first congratulate the Alberta government and all Albertans for their support of Canada's goal to reach zero plastic waste by 2030. Alberta is a key partner in implementing the Canada-wide strategy on zero plastic waste. And we welcome the province's recently announced goal to become the Western North America Center of Excellence for Plastics Recycling by 2030. We can only reach these goals by working together. So congratulations are also in order for Alberta's Agricultural Plastics Recycling Pilot Program, which aims to help address the issue of agricultural plastic waste. Across Canada and across economic sectors, there is an emerging consensus that a circular economy approach is core to addressing the problem of plastic waste and pollution. When plastic waste is reused in new products through enhanced recycling techniques and technologies, there is a significant opportunity to recapture the value of materials, including products such as agricultural plastics used in Alberta. We are also encouraged by the, the unanimous support of recent uh, motion in the Alberta legislature that it received to examine the opportunities afforded by implementing extended producer responsibility. With it, 
Alberta has the opportunity to move into the ranks of leading provinces on plastic recycling, such as Ontario, Quebec, and BC. On the question of the proposal to add plastic manufactured items to Schedule 1 of the SEPA, this is an important step to allow us to manage the waste and pollution caused by plastic products. We conducted a science assessment of plastic pollution and its core findings are that ma macroplastics are ubiquitous in the environment and harmful to wildlife and habitat. Canadians see the effects of plastic pollution in their communities and waterways. They see the volumes of plastic waste being discarded and they expect the government to take, the government to take action. The proposal to list plastic manufactured items on Schedule 1 of SEPA would enable the government to take measures to address pollution and waste along the life cycle of plastics and protect our environment while also moving Canada to a more circular resource re efficient economy. The government does not believe that this action hurts Albertans or any other Canadians. On the contrary, acting to better manage plastic waste will keep plastics in the economy and out of Canada's environment. Minister Wilkinson, Minister of the Environment, recently released for consultation a discussion paper that provides an overview of the government's proposed next steps. It contains a framework to address single-use plastics along with a proposed list of single of six single-use items to either ban or restrict, as well as proposal for the establishment of recycled content requirements in products and packaging. This latter action aims to drive investment in recycling infrastructure and spur innovation in technology and product design. We want to support the growth of the Canadian recycling industry, boost overall economic growth, and create new jobs while reducing greenhouse gas emissions. All of these proposed actions have the potential to complement and accelerate progress toward Alberta's goal to become a center of excellence for plastics recycling. The government wants to hear from, from Canadians and stakeholders on its proposed approach to address plastic pollution and waste. The comments received will help shape the choices on the path forward to a more circular economy for plastics in Canada. Thank you. We want to remind the Parliamentary Secretary that he's not to use the name of uh, a minister uh, in the House uh, and uh, or uh, an MP by, by their first name or, or last name. Uh, the Honourable uh, Member for Edmonton River, Ben. Well done, Madam Speaker. I was going to try to catch him on that one, but you beat me to it. Uh, no, you, you know why, why the, the labeling of plastic substances is, is, is so detrimental, not, not just to, to my province of Alberta, but across the country? It's because they did it with this, this backdoor way of doing it. Are we debating plastics legislation here or the labeling of plastics here in the, the chamber? No, we're not. Because the way that they did it, they put it, they, they, they put it through without any sort of legislation. They did it through this, this backdoor, which has the entire stakeholder community confused as to whether or not they have to move today, tomorrow, yesterday in terms of changing their, their products. So I'd, I'd ask the, the honorable member why he, why the, the government chose this, uh, this lack of transparency and sneaky way to, to label plastics as toxic. The Secretary. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, provinces, territories, municipalities are leaders in the recovery and recycling of plastic waste. The Government of Canada is continuing to work with them to strengthen existing programs and increase Canada's capacity to reuse and recover more plastics. This will include collaborating with them to ensure that rules are consistent and transparent across the country and that producers and sellers of plastic products are made responsible for collecting these plastics. Thank you, Madam Speaker.